All right. Good morning, class. Okay, and welcome today to our class. All right. So today, uh, we are still at uh, our unit six, which is crime. All right. Okay, so let's just look at our slides. Okay, I guess you can see my slides, right? So today will be lesson 49. Okay, it will be a listening lesson in the beginning and then we will proceed to the speaking part. All right, so this lesson can be found on page 76 in your download English textbook. Okay, in your Form 5 English textbook. All right. Okay, so let's just look at this picture. Okay, what is happening here? Or who are these people? Who are these people? Any idea who are they? Or what's happening in this picture? Can you all see this picture? Is it police? Right, it looks like a police. And then, what is the police what? doing? Catch the thief. Okay, it looks arrest. like that. It looks like an arrest or catching a thief, right? All right. So, it, it is because our topic today is still crime. All right. So, uh, when there is a crime, you will always see a police. Police or some people call it cops, right? Okay. So, when a police want to arrest someone, they normally must have a warrant of arrest and and if they have to catch someone and take them and go they will put handcuffs on their hands all right okay so what are we going to do is we are going to listen to um some audio all right and you are going to circle the correct answers all right so i hope all of you all are ready okay this uh, audio they are actually very short so please listen very carefully. All right. Unit six, listening. Exercise one. One. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Two. I'm sure he's been arrested. Three. He must have been at least 1.8 meters tall. Four. Thanks for reassuring me. Five. I have my doubts about her innocence. Six. I think his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. All right. I hope you heard the recording just now. All right. Do you think you want to hear it once again or you think you are able to answer it? Okay, let's look at number one. The woman thinks the man is being too harsh or not harsh enough. Are you able to answer or do you want to listen once again? Once again, teacher. All right. Okay. Unit six. Listening. Exercise one. One. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? All right. So what do you think? The woman thinks the man is being too harsh or not harsh enough? Too harsh. Okay. Let's check our answer. Yes. Okay. Too harsh. All right. So let's look at number two. Two. I'm sure he's been arrested. Three. All right. So what do you think is number two? Is the man is. The man is certain that the criminal was has been arrested. Okay. Let's check our answer. Yes. Okay. That is the answer. Okay. Number three. He must have been at least 1.8 meters tall. Okay, what do you think is the answer? Yeah. Because he says, at least. Alright, at least. 
okay so he was 1.8 meters tall or more or less more okay let's check our answer all right it is more because at least means he is definitely not lower than 1.8 he is definitely uh, taller than 1.8 meters tall all right so let's listen to number 4 four Thanks for reassuring me. Five. Okay. The woman now feels calmer or more calmer. confused. All right. So she is now feels calmer. Okay. Reassure means you are giving assurance that you know everything is all right. Okay. Number five. The man is sure or not sure that the girl is innocent. Okay. Let's listen. I have my doubts about her innocence. So I have my doubts. Meaning? Not sure. All right. Let's check our answer. All right. The man is not sure that the girl is innocent. Okay. Let's look at number six. The man says the coat was definitely black or possibly black. Six. I think his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. Okay, you mean you see, yeah? When he says, "I cannot swear to it," that means I am not certain. I am like I can't promise you that it is black. So, what is the answer? Definitely Possib or possibly? Possibly. All right. So it's so obvious, ah. Huh? The man says the coat was possibly black. Okay, so this is how you do your listening uh, component. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, now listen again and use the phrases you hear to help you complete these alternative ways of saying things. All right, so you are going to listen to the same audio, and now you are going to see what, how are the. I mean, you can just try to come up with an alternative way of giving the answer. All right. Okay, so let's listen. Unit six, listening. Exercise one. One. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Okay, so that's too easy. That's what? A bit easy. See, that's see, ah, uh, too easy. So the alternative way of saying that's too easy. What's another way of saying that's too easy? So, what's another way of saying too easy? You can use this as a guide. A bit easy. Okay, let's check our answer. That's a bit easy, isn't it? All right, too easy means it's very easy. A bit also, it is a little bit easy. Okay, let's look at number two. He must still be at school. I'm okay. Dash. He's still at school. All right. So you listen to number two. So you just get an idea with the previous listening. Two. I'm sure he's been arrested. Three. Okay. So he must still be at school. I'm sure. Okay, let's check our answer. Yeah, I'm sure he's still at school. All right. Okay, so let's look at number three. We ran fifty meters or more. We ran dash fifty meters. Okay, let's listen to the example. He must have been at least one point eight meters tall. Okay, at so, least. All right. Let's check our answer. All right, we. Ran at least fifty meters. Okay, see the condition. We ran fifty meters or more. So we are not sure whether we ran fifty or we ran more. So at least fifty meters. Okay, number four. I'll speak to her and make her feel calmer. I will speak to her and dash her. Okay, let's check. Four. Thanks for reassuring me. Five. 
Okay, so what can you say? I'll speak to her and reassure. All right, let's check our answer. Yes, okay, and reassure her. Okay, let's look at number five. I am not sure whether she can be trusted. Okay, I dash whether she can be trusted. Okay, let's look at our example. I have my doubts about her innocence. Six. Okay, what do you think? I have my doubt about. All right, I have my doubts about whether she can be trusted. If you say doubts means you are not sure. It possibly a yes or a no. Okay, number six. I think the car was red, but I'm not certain. Okay, you are not sure. I think the car was red, but I okay, let's couldn't listen. swear to it. I okay, think let's. his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. All right, so what's the answer? Couldn't swear to it. All right, let's check our answer. All right, so that is the answer. All right, okay, so let's look at our next one. Okay, so here we are going to have seven different uh, situations. Okay, so let's listen. Okay, and let's try to listen once and try to get the answer. Okay, so you will hear people talking in seven different situations for questions one to seven. Choose the best answer, A, B, or C. Okay, listen very carefully. All right, so before you listen, you read the questions, the question as well as all the options given for the answer. Okay, so let's look at number one. You hear a police officer talking. What does he think about modern policing? All right, modern policing meaning you are a police at this modern world. So what they need, all right. So A is, it's more dangerous than in the past. Meaning, uh, now, the modern world, it is more dangerous than those days. Or B, technology plays an important part. Okay, now we are into a lot of technology, right? Okay, everything is online and all that. So the later we are going to hear. Okay, the next one, paperwork takes too long. All right, okay, so are you ready to listen? Exercise 3. 1. You hear a police officer talking. I've been in the police force for 30 years. And of course, I've seen some big changes in that time. There have always been risks in the job. And nowadays, there are definitely more people carrying guns and knives than in the past. But we're better protected too, with special clothing and equipment. So I generally feel pretty safe. Computers have completely changed our job, though. Without them, we wouldn't solve half the crimes we solve now. And what's nice is that they've actually reduced the number of reports we have to write. So paperwork has thankfully decreased, leaving us more time to catch criminals. All right, so what you think is the answer, all right? What does he think about modern policing? So what is the answer? It's more dangerous than in the past. Technology plays an important part or paperwork takes too long. B. B. B is technology plays an important part. All right, let's check our answer. Yes, the answer is B because everything is now computerized. So they have more time to catch thieves instead of wasting their time on paperwork all right the word decrease means it has reduced all right okay so let's look at number two two you hear two people talking about an escaped criminal did you hear a criminal broke out of the prison near here the other day yes i did but they must have caught him and put him safely away again by now I'm not sure about that. The police helicopter was out searching yesterday, which suggests he's still on the run. Do you know what he went to prison for? He could be dangerous. Well, I think most of the people in that prison are serving sentences for burglary, shoplifting, that kind of thing. I don't think they're too violent. 
Still, we should probably make sure we keep the doors and windows locked, just in case, until we hear they've caught him. Definitely. All right. So, you hear two people talking about an escaped criminal. What do they agree about? A. The man is probably dangerous. B. They should be extra careful. C. The police have caught the man. So, which one you think is the answer? I think it's A, teacher. The man is probably dangerous. Are you sure? B, B teacher, B. B, okay. Now, I have two answers. I have he's either dangerous yeah. or uh, they should be careful. Okay, let's check our answer. Okay, the answer is B. Okay, because they have not caught him yet, right? So, he could be like somewhere around your housing area or whatsoever. So, we should be extra careful. Okay, so let's look at number three. Three. You hear a young woman talking. When I was at school, I was always getting into trouble, usually for vandalism and shoplifting, but once for arson as well. I was too young to go to prison, so I had to do community service many times. I know I was difficult to put up with, and I'm not surprised nobody believed anything I said or trusted me with anything. The thing is, though, I did my time and I learnt my lesson. I'm not like that anymore. I'm a better person and much happier for it, but people still don't trust me. They ought to give me a second chance, but they don't. All right. See, you hear a young woman talking. What does she feel about the way she's treated now? She deserves to be distrusted. I mean, people don't trust her. That means she has to be done like that. That means people should not trust her anymore. Or she's glad that people accept she has changed. Or C, she thinks people treat her unfairly. So which one you think is the answer? C. C. Okay, let's check the answer. Yes, okay. She feels now, you see, now she's feeling very sad because people, she has already uh, served whatever that she's supposed to do. She has done community service and all that, but people still think that she's a bad person. Okay, number four, you hear two people talking about a crime. What does the woman think about the sentence that was given? Okay, it was too harsh. It was appropriate for the crime. It will probably be changed. All right, so let's listen. Four, you hear two people talking about a crime. You know that driver who drove onto the pavement and killed a woman and her baby? Yes, I remember. He was only sentenced to five years in prison. Can you believe it? He should have got a life sentence or the death penalty, if you ask me. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? I mean, it was awful, of course, but he didn't mean to kill them. I agree that five years is hardly adequate for causing the death of two innocent people, though. I'm sure they'll reconsider the sentence. I expect it will be increased to 15 or even 20 years, perhaps. Well, I certainly hope so. All right. So what does the woman think about the sentence that was given? Is it it was too harsh? It was appropriate for the crime or it will probably be changed? C. C. Okay, it will probably be changed. Okay, let's check our answer. Yes, okay, it will probably be changed. Okay, let's look at number five. Five. You hear? Okay, before that, okay, you hear an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar, right? A burglar means a person, a thief. What is the old man sure about? All right. Okay, so let's see. The approximate height of the burglar, the area the burglar came from, the words the burglar said. You're an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar. So, Mr. Jones, could you tell me what the burglar looked like? He must have been at least 1.8 meters tall. Definitely around 185, I'd say. He spoke to me as well, you know. 
I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was quite polite, actually. He told me that if I kept still and quiet, he wouldn't have to tie me up. Or perhaps he said he wouldn't have to kill me. I forget now. Anyway, I'm still here. Did he have any particular accent? I think he was from Liverpool, but I may be wrong about that. Perhaps he was from the Northwest, but I couldn't swear to it. Okay, you see, just now he used a lot of terms of I am doubtful, uh, I can't swear to it, and all that. So now, here the question is What is the old man sure about? So, what was it? I think it's A. A, the approximate height of the burglar. All right, let's check our answer. Yes, that is the answer. All right, because he was like, you know, he, he kind of like he was sure about his height. He didn't know. He thought maybe he's from here or from there. He's not very sure. Even the words also, he said, I am not very sure what he said. Okay, let's look at number six. You hear a policewoman talking to some TV and newspaper reporters. What is she doing? Okay, A, trying to reassure people. B, asking for help from the public. C, giving details about a crime. Okay, let's listen. Six. You hear a policewoman talking to some TV and newspaper reporters. I can confirm that three murders have been committed in the city in the last two weeks. What I would like to do now is to ask people to remain calm and not to panic. The public have been extremely helpful in coming forward with information, and we have been able to build a very clear picture of the person we're looking for. We are doing everything we can to find this person and to get him safely locked up, and I'm confident that we are very close to getting a result. As soon as we have any further information, we will, of course, let you know. Okay, so what is she doing? Is she trying to reassure the people? Or was she asking for help from the public? Or was she giving details about a crime? A. A. Okay, let's check our answer. Yes, it is A. Okay, she is not telling, oh, he's a murderer or he is a thief or whatever. She did not give those kind of information. She was just trying to keep the people calm to say that, you know, don't worry, everything will be all right. So that is trying to reassure people. All right, let's look at the last one. You hear a man talking about an incident on his land. What is his opinion of the girl? Okay, she was trespassing. Trespassing means she was walking through his land. She wasn't trespassing. And see, he's not sure whether she was trespassing or not. Did she walk in his land or she did not walk? All right, so let's listen. Seven. You hear a man talking about an incident on his land. People are always trespassing on my land, and it drives me mad. Last week, my farm manager accused a local girl of smoking in one of my sheds. He said he'd seen her in there with his own eyes, and so he caught her red-handed. She swears she's innocent, of course. She says it wasn't her, and that she's never even been in there. I trust my manager completely, and he's convinced she's guilty of trespassing. But I do have my doubts. I know the girl's parents, and I can't imagine she'd be disrespectful of other people's property. It's difficult to prove either way. Okay, what is his opinion of the girl? A, B, or C? C. C, is it? Okay, let's check our answer. All right, yes. He's not sure whether she was trespassing or not. Although the manager said, yes, I saw her and all that. But this guy says he wasn't sure because he knows the parents very well and uh, he's not sure if uh, she will be disrespectful. All right. Okay, so let's look at our next one.
All right. Okay. So let's look at this. Do you think crime is a problem where you live? What sort of crimes are commuted, uh, committed? Have you all seen a crime in your place? A crime can be anything, even scribbling the wall, uh, you know, breaking the public telephone is also a crime. Have you all ever come across any crime in your place where your house is or maybe on your way to school or on your way for your tuition class or when you were in the field playing football? Have you all come across any crime or have you all seen any? Yes or no? Yes. You have seen. All right. Okay. Crime can be anything small or even up to like, you know, sometimes you see murders taking place and all that, right? Okay. So that is also a crime. Okay. Have you ever witnessed or been a victim of a crime? Okay. Maybe somebody comes and puts a knife at your neck. Or somebody comes and, you know, pulls your hand back like a snatch, uh, snatch theft. You know, have you all ever experienced something like that? Or your bicycle was stolen when you went to the shop? Or your handphone goes missing? No, teacher. Never. All right. So never. actually, never. Okay, so that's good. Okay. There are many people who have experienced crimes in their life. All right, you see, like the second picture here. All right, so you see, when they do it nicely on the wall, okay, we do with, you know, like patterns, all that, it becomes graffiti. Okay, if they scribble with the paint and, you know, like, you know, they, they vandalize the walls and all that, so that becomes a crime. All right, you see, look at the third picture. Okay, there's somebody with the gun. Okay, so this is very scary. Okay, this is also a crime. Okay, how often do you see police officers? Are they on foot, in cars, on motorbikes or on horses? Okay, we don't have um, police on horses in our country. All right, but in other countries, yes, they do. Okay, like, um, have you all seen police? Policemen, policewomen, have you all seen? Yes. Yes, right? So it's quite common. Okay, like in Malaysia, probably we'll see them in cars or jeeps. Okay, uh, we will see them on motorbikes and all that. But in some other countries, they sometimes are on even a horse. Okay, it depends on the country. All right, sometimes when speaking, we need to show that you are not sure about what you're saying. Look at the speeches and complete the sentences about them with these words. Underline the phrases that show the speaker is uncertain. All right, so let's look at this, number one to number five. See, this is probably a. So, which word here? See, like the word probably. So, probably here shows that we are not certain. We are not sure. Maybe it is the answer. Right? So, let's look at number two. This might be a. So, which word shows that you are not certain? Let's look at this number two. This might be a. So, which word in this uh, phrase here? is i mean shows that you are not certain you are not sure might might all right so might might or might be okay number three i'm not certain but i guess that this is a okay so which word here i'm not certain okay i'm not certain another one more yes guess. i guess guess okay you're just guessing all right so number four I'm I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a. So, which one? I'm not 100% sure and I uh, think. All right. Very good. Okay. Then number five. It's possible that this is a. Possible. Possible. So, possible. So, maybe it could be. All right. So now what are we going to do is we are going to fill in the blanks with these words here. Okay. You know what is a burglar alarm, right? Okay. And then a radar gun. A radar gun is used for, you know, people who uh, exceed the, the driving speed limit. Okay. And then security cameras, you know, the CCTVs. Okay. And then 
security lock or security door. You know, the security doors come with security locks and speed limit. When we drive our cars on the main road or in whichever roads or even the highway, there is a speed limit to follow. All right, so let's try to answer this question. Okay, this is picture number one. So let's look at number one. This is probably a security camera. Security camera. Okay, let's check our answer. Yes, it is a security camera. Okay, number two. Number two, this one, picture number two. Okay, this might be a security lock. Are you sure? Alarm? Uh, okay, what is it? So, which answer now? I've got two answers here. Is it a burglar alarm, radar gun, security camera, security lock, or alarm. speed limit? Burglar alarm. Burglar alarm. Burglar alarm. Okay, let's check. All right, it is a burglar alarm. Okay, number three. Okay, so this picture, number three. I'm not certain, but I guess that this Ray is a radar gun. Radar gun. Okay, let's check our answer. Yes, it is a radar gun. Okay, number four. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a... Speed limit. limit. Okay, it is a speed limit, is it? Okay, let's check. Yes, it is a speed limit. Okay, number five. It's possible that this is a... Burglar alarm. Ah, what is this? Number five. Security lock. All right. Okay. It is security lock. Okay. So let's look at these two pictures here. Okay. Picture A and picture B. Okay. Compare the two photographs. What crimes do you think have taken place in each photo? Okay. In picture A, what's happening here? What do you think is happening? Why did the police stop the car? Uh, speeding. Okay, possibly it is speeding. Okay, what do you think would have happened to this picture, in this car in picture B? Probably a or an? A burglary. Okay, you, you, think, you think somebody has broken into this car. All right? Okay, okay, so let's look at this. Or else if it was not someone broken into this car, what else could have happened to this car when you see the glass has shattered? You know, it's dented up here. Uh, vandalism. Either vandalism or probably an accident. All right. Okay. So let's look at this one. Which of these two offenses do you think is more serious? A or B? A. You think it's A. All right, maybe if the car is speeding, they probably could pose danger to people, other people, other road users, probably could cause an accident. All right, okay, like this, if it was because of burglary, picture B, then possibly the people are safe or maybe the things have gone. Maybe they had money inside the car, all would have gone or taken by the burglar. All right, but if it was an accident in picture B, then possibly there's going to be danger for the driver or whoever was in that car. All right? Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, compare the two photographs. What crimes are these things designed to prevent? Okay, let's look at C. What you think can this picture do? Okay, this is a CCTV. So what can this picture or whatever, what can this CCTV do? What can it prevent? What can it prevent? Why do people have CCTVs in some buildings or in houses? Why do they have a CCTV? Any idea? Anyone? Anyone has CCTV in your house? Yes or no? Sometimes you have CCTV right in front of your gate or behind your house. Yes, uh, why why do they fix a CCTV? Even in our school, there's CCTV. Why? To catch the people. 
to catch the people you mean you want you can monitor people right you can see whether you know someone um someone like you're not supposed to enter your house is you can see okay you can see that or you know you can prevent things from happening if you ever happen to see a thief coming with a gun or uh, with a knife or something like that you will be alert right you can inform the police okay okay like this one a security door or a security lock what is the reason people have this kind of lock or a door in their house or in a building why do they have this is this for fun do they fix security doors and uh, security you know all this uh, locks and all that is it just for fun or is it for a reason why do banks have this kind of security doors and security locks have you all been to banks or have you all been to gold shops you know jewelry shops shops that sells gold you normally see all the security doors security locks in this kind of places why can you all see this picture class yes okay why do they have this kind of security doors or security locks in those kind of places what do they want to prevent what does it prevent anyone here has security doors in your house you know those doors are like made of metal they are so thick and they are very heavy okay have you all seen this kind of security doors yes or no can you all see this picture can teacher ah uh, why why you all have this kind of doors why you don't want to just have a simple door or just put a curtain why Can we just put a curtain in a bank? No. Why? No. Why you can't? Why you can't just put for safety? For safety reasons, right? Okay, we do not want uh, thieves to go in, uh, robbers to go and rob the bank, right? So that's the reason why we have security doors or uh, security locks. All right. So as your own self, your personal, your own self. do you have anything or you know how do you protect yourself like example you are walking alone back from school you're going back to your house and suddenly someone comes to attack you do you have anything with you or can you do anything to protect yourself what can you do just imagine you you are actually having a handphone and you know you are uh, you are playing with your phone and you just went to the shop and you're walking back to your house and you're walking back to your house somebody just comes and try to snatch your handphone from you so what is the thing that you will do to protect yourself imagine he comes and brings a knife and puts it at your uh, your neck what are you going to do Okay come thief you can take my phone and go are you going to say like that Yes or no Class what will no, you do teacher. What will you do As a normal human being what human being what will you do when you encounter such a situation Somebody comes and tries to to pull your phone and all that or pull your handbag or something like that what are you going to do Scream. Will you just? Uh, probably you will scream, okay? Or else, what will you do to the person? Will you be like just screaming and standing there? Kick him or? Very good. You will probably kick him. You will scream, okay? Probably you will push the person person away, right? Okay. Certain people they will have pepper spray. Have you all heard of pepper spray? No. Okay. Ah, uh, so this pepper spray is actually a harmless thing. It's just made of pepper. Okay, it doesn't kill people. But when when there is danger, normally girls like to keep this with them. 
So what they do is they will just spray it on their face. I mean, to that bad person who is trying, that criminal or whoever, the burglar or a thief or a robber or whoever is coming to attack them, they will try to take it out from their pocket and they will spray in their eyes. So the moment they spray this pepper spray, so what happens here is the person who comes to attack them will get their eyes, the eyes will be like burning. So they will be distracted with their burning eyes so the victim can actually run away. All right. So this is like not that you're going to kill the person. This is just a temporary discomfort so that uh, you will be able to save yourself. So these are certain things people can do. Okay. Besides that, you can actually use a like this, you know, they have this pocket alarm, right? When you just, you know, you just pull a trigger there or something like that, and then it will be like an alarm. So this may probably frighten the the robber or the thief and you know and the person may run away so you can save yourself okay uh, or besides that you can actually learn martial arts all right so that depends some people they are good so they can defend themselves with this martial arts all right okay so what can communities do to help reduce crime in their area so what can can we do what can we do? What can communities do? Like in your, you know, your taman and all that. What can they do? Have you all seen, you know, the, the elder people of your, your taman, they go out at night, they take a torchlight, or certain tamans, what they have is they have uh, security guards. Have you, all, have you all seen that? Yes. Yes, right? Yeah. Okay. So what things do you think people, okay, cause people to turn to crime? Okay. So like this, uh, all right. So sometimes you see police walking around, okay, walking around, talking to the people and all that. So just to make sure everyone is all right. Okay. What things do you think cause people to turn to crime? Why do people become criminals? Why? For example, we see people stealing food. Why do they steal food? Why they can't buy the food? Why must they steal the food? Because of what? They don't have money. Ah, because they don't have money. If they have money, why should they go and steal food? All right? Okay, poverty is a problem. When you have no money and you are so hungry, and, you know, you have brothers and sisters at home, your father and mother, they all have got no food to eat. They are so hungry. And what is next? They are led to crime. Crime, maybe they will do something very small. Probably they will just enter a supermarket and just put something inside their pocket and they walk out. All right. And then when they walk out at the door, the alarm triggers. All right. So when the alarm triggers, they are caught by the police and then they are taken to the police station and then they are put in the lockup and then they are, you know, they are sentenced to prison and all that. So that's how crime, uh, they are led to crime. But there are many other ways as well. OK, do you think prisons should train prisoners so they can start a new career when they leave? When people are caught for crime and they are sent to a prison, do you think? Prisoners must be trained to do something. So when they come out and they still have no money, do you think they will still they will definitely continue stealing food, right? So do you think they should be trained to do something? Yes or no? Yes. All right. They must be trained. Okay. I have also read in Malaysia when uh, in you know like. Uh, prisoners who are females they teach them how to cook uh, baking and all that okay so it is a must see like this picture here this third picture it shows prisoners are trained to build houses see can you see they are actually laying the bricks and all that so this they are teaching them how to build houses so possibly the moment they are uh, no after they have sentenced their uh, their whatever uh, they are sentenced to prison and then once they are finished they are they are finished with their sentence of I mean they are staying in the prison and all that and they are released 
they come out of prison, they will not be lost. Meaning, they can also start their own business, probably help their neighbors, you know, uh, like this, like little, little repair works, go and fix the light, you know, repair their toilet, you know, small kind of things that they can do, all these kind of things. Uh, so this will actually boost their confidence and make them a better person. So if they do not have such training, when they come back, they will be lost and they will be led to crime again. All right. Okay, the society can change a good person to bad and bad person to good. So make sure you as a human being must do your part, right? Avoid getting into or getting involved in crime. If someone has already, you know, committed a crime and they change and they come back, they must be accepted, all right? So we must, um, you know, we must look at that person positively. Don't always look at them as though they are a criminal. Okay, people do change. All right, so I guess you understand today's lesson. Okay, I will send your work to your class telegram.